The Midday Mix on Mix 93.8. Second Community Corner interview. We have Ryan Hogarth in studio with us. No stranger to Mix FM. Good <laughs> to, uh, it's good for our paths to cross again, Ryan. Thanks. Welcome to the studio. Uh, thanks, Damien. Uh, yeah, we were just discussing how long ago it was, and it was a long time ago. We've all moved on a little bit, but just yeah, a fam- little bit. And, and, and you've rebranded new studios. It's looking all fresh. It's, oh, it's fabulous. Yeah, well, welcome to the studio. Uh, so we're going to be talking a bit about esports today. Yes. A game in particular that I'm quite well. Uh, well acquainted with and my friends are absolutely crazy about uh, it's a game called Rocket League yes what is it all about so so Rocket League it, it's 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 a game that's kind of coming out of the out of a niche space into a more kind of mainstream space it, it's it's a game a very unique game in that it's it's best and worst description is that it's <laughs> soccer in a rocket powered car which just sounds ridiculous and until you see it and then if you actually sit down and play it and understand that it's it's a very mechanical game which requires a lot. I mean, Damien, you were just saying you gave up, and and probably because it is mechanically difficult. It takes a lot of time yeah. to master. Um, and overnight, a year and a half ago, it became the highest paid esport in South Africa, uh, or in the sub-Saharan Africa region, with a, with an annual prize pool of around three million rand. So, so that's kind of shed shone quite a bright light on it. We've seen an influx of players into the game, and and I've played Rocket League for 2015, so it's almost eight. It will be eight. So pretty much year. from its release, from its release, and 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 I think it's a and it's an astonishingly fantastic game, and I just want to kind of shine light on that, and and also the profession of esport because mm. it's it's greatly misunderstood, um, and you have and it is dominated by very young players. We're talking 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds. And, you know, in, in in Rocket League at twenty three, you're considered you know, people are retiring <laughs> at twenty three because it's like oh man, I'm too old for this now, um, just because of the pace of the game and obviously. The, the fingers aren't as nimble as they used to be. Yeah. So it's a, it's greatly misunderstood. Like eSport, when you've got a kid who's 16 years old and wants to devote a lot of time and there's that clash with parents and, uh, and, and then just broadly, it kind of seems like a dilettante activity where I think it's greatly misunderstood how much dedication it takes to be a professional player. And then on top of that, our top players, I think they should be superstars. They should be household names. So I'd, I'd love to help move it in that direction. 100%. It's a, it's a fantastically interesting game. I mean, if you're a fan of Top Gear, you might kind of understand the concept where I think in one of the episodes they had a giant <laughs> soccer ball with cars bumping into it. Basically football, but now you've got aerial maneuvers that are involved, mm. you've got uh, car customizations. Mm. There's a lot that goes into the game. And I think the misconception is that it's only, you know, the younger people play. Yes. But that's not true. I mean, I know 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, mm. 50-year-olds who absolutely love the game. Um, in terms of the South African markets... Um, uh, why, what, what do you think makes this such a well-supported game, um, both in South Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa and globally? Well, I think there are a number of reasons. One is that it's it's uh, well, an upside and a downside. In fact, is that it's it's very different to most other titles, mm. which which makes it unique. So it, it has a standout feature there and almost a monopoly in terms of being a game that's very different. But on the downside, it doesn't have transferable skills. You know, if you're great at CS:GO, uh, you know any first-person shooter, you can pick up another first-person shooter and kind of figure it out. Relatively. Yeah, the mechanics are relatively exactly. the same. Whereas with this, you you kind of starting from scratch but it is an incredibly accessible game if, if you know nothing about esport and you try and watch a game of CSGO for example it's very difficult to kind of understand what's going on yeah. and, you know the maps and who's on what team and the and, and the weapons being used and you know all, whatever's going on there whereas Rocket League like soccer very quickly watching the, for five minutes you understand there's a blue team an orange team and the orange guys are trying to score in the blue net and vice versa so it's, it's very easy to pick up from that point of view um, and and it is, you know, I, I'm, I'm not one of those, uh, you know, I'm an, I'm an, old, I'm an older man, but I don't, I, I understand the roles ga- games play. So I'm not mm. big on, I don't have an issue with violence in games. It's kind of part of the deal. We all understand it. But Rocket League is completely non-violent. There's no yeah. shooting of other players. There's no trying to kill them. You can blow up the car, but it's very, <laughs> it's very tame. So, so it's friendly. It is really an E for everybody kind of game. So you can pick it up at six years old mm. and start playing Rocket League and get very much into it and get 
get very so it's accessible from that point of view and it's incredibly entertaining a game of rocket league is five minutes a competitive series might be you know a best of seven so mm. you, you know you're in for 35 40 minutes tops um so so for our short attention spans it's wonderful from that point of view what kind of opportunities would you say that a game like rocket league affords south african gamers in in particular well i, I for me it speaks to the broader esports culture in in the region i mean the esports have been around for a long time but i think it's been it has been kind of niche and and, and small so i think Part of the growth of Rocket League, what I'd like to see is, is the industry because there are massive, there can be great opportunities in esports in general. And it's not just playing the game. Uh, obviously, you have, like any ecosystem, if you're going to go play soccer, you've got the players themselves and, and, and everything that exists to help soccer players or whatever the sport is. But there's an entire industry around that. There's coaches. There's, you know, we have mental coaches. So you have a team of Rocket League players. Someone is the mental coach to kind of, because, you know, these are kids and they get really down on themselves when they're playing poorly and getting beaten so you want so then there's broadcast opportunities you know you, we want to bring that to the masses so you yeah. want to show the game being played so you need analysts you need broadcasters commentators um and and that ho- uh, content creators so. anyone who doesn't think that this is professional should watch what the, the guys are doing overseas like when you say about about commentators mm. you well, your mind will be blown at the the professionalism involved and just like commentating on a rugby game mm. or a cricket game or any other the kind of racing game uh, those those guys analyzing the games they know the players they know the moves the tactics it's it's incredible to watch these guys work as well and Damon you don't have to go overseas Rocket League here we have the Rocket League Championship Series which is part of the global world championships um, I mean we put on you know the Africa Gaming Cyber League ACGL put on an outstandingly professional broadcast for the nine mass- main regional championships that happen in sub-Saharan Africa and we have you know analysts and, and commentators at it's incredible and with stats the same thing as you say any sport you see you'll see the players their stats how many goals they've scored their assists their demolitions their all their all their stats and we're talking about how play styles interact and vary it it is it, it's it's wonderful and 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 that's my whole that's my whole shtick is that the opportunities are there and it's an industry that must be grown because there is undoubtedly massive interest in in esport, and and it's and it's something that can be grown and developed. A very interesting part of the conversation yes. is if you have a child uh, that's going to school, yes, and they want to be an athlete, they want to be a rugby player, a, a rower, whatever sport may be, and they go and wake up at five o'clock in the morning, they go to training, they come home, there's a training after school, and maybe the, you know they're they're busy with something afterwards. Parents don't tend to to have too big a problem with that. But mm. if we look at esports, there is this kind of idea that it's just games. And it's fun, yes. and you're blowing off real life, and you know you're not you're not uh, doing anything of value. Mm. And the fact that there are these kind of opportunities, these kind of prize monies, uh, these kind of leagues out there, mm. kind of turns that all on its head. If you can support a child, you know, go, going and, and practicing sw- swimming is a great example. A time-consuming endeavor, mm. lots of time in the pool, versus someone who may not be that inclined to the sports, but they still want to be a competitor. You know, in terms of esports, um, what's that conversation like with parents and 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 their children what 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 kind of advice do you have so that? i'm i these are conversations i've had with real parents who've yeah. got a 14 year old a 15 year old who's like dad i want to play this game and and, and that exact thought <laughs> of like well get your schoolwork done get you know yeah. you've got to go outside uh, so it, i think it's understanding that this it, the general stigma i guess attached to esport or to video games is that it is it's a slacker's activity hmm. whereas the people at the top of the game, the people who are competing for that five, 3 million rand prize pool, they're putting in 25 to 40 hours a week of training and grinding at the least. to get better at it. This is a job. <laughs> yeah. It is a proper job. And uh, so it, it, it takes an incredible amount of discipline and focus. And they need support if that's what they're going to do. For sure. Like, you know... It, you, you brought up swimming. That's a great example. They've got to get up at five in the morning to go and do their lengths and all that. Get in the icy pool and do the But then the concern, the you're, you're very excited. Your kid is active, but then you're going, hold on, but you've got to like also look your, your schoolwork. Yeah. You've got to, uh, there's other things, your social activities. And it's the same with eSport. Balance. Yeah they, want, yeah, they want to grind the hours. Absolutely. But you've got to be doing your schoolwork. You've got to go outside and touch the grass. <laughs> get a bit of vitamin D. <laughs> uh, so all of those, all of that balance is important, but it's understanding that there are, 
and unique to esport and maybe in, in traditional sports as well is that there are opportunities that present themselves professionally when you are still very young. Yes. The top players in the world who are earning ridiculous money are are in their late teens. So there is the question of school and do you delay things. There are proper real world conversations to have, but they must be had. And 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 my you know all of this thing in Rocket League, I, I, it's a passion project for me. And 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 being a parent myself and understanding the, those concerns have the conversation understand it and 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 see how because if your if your kid is incredibly passionate about an esport how do you support them in that endeavor there 100%. are very real life opportunities and the other thing that's missed i mean you were speaking about you and your mates playing rocket league and you know that whatever the esport th- the networks these young people develop for sure. lifelong friendships that are developed uh, around the game those those will that's a social investment for the rest of their lives 100% I've got a, a handful of friends that I have never actually met in real life we we started gaming together and then because of that real you know friendship was cultivated and mm. we met in the real world and we still see each other you know <laughs> uh, on, a, on a regular basis we've got a very interesting question that's been raised by yes. Robert Robert says the problem with Ra- Rocket League is the lack of South African servers when you play on an EU server you're looking at something like 180 milliseconds of latency but uh, I guess if you're doing it as an eSport you'll have a private server with the work that you guys are putting in, mm. do you see more investment in South African servers and the ability for us to not have to go and go through the list and go, okay, what's the latency for the USA servers or the EU servers or somewhere well, in Middle I'll, Africa? I'll circumvent all of that and say, first of all, Rocket League has South African servers. They do. I, I, I play on anything from 9 to 16 latency ping. So uh, <laughs> we, have, we have South African servers. So when we're competing locally, um, that's... That's the sort of so there is no, that's not a latency is not an issue. Rocket League is the most developer publisher supported uh, video game there is in in this region, and what that means is that the the developers of of Rocket League, Psionics, as far back as 2016, 2017 established South African servers. So we have the servers here, and then they're the only publisher that's investing this much into prize pools for the competitive side of the game. So that is no problem. It does become a little bit of a problem outside of South Africa yeah. because we are sub-Saharan Africa. The next biggest country out of South, outside of South Africa is, believe it or not, Reunion. Island. Reunion uh, Island. Which is, you know, if you ever look at a map, you see this giant island of Madagascar, and yeah. you see a tiny dot of Mauritius, and if you look just to the left of that, an even smaller dot is Reunion <laughs> Island, an island of 800,000 people, and they are producing unbelievably good Rocket League players, and, and, and by far the biggest community in Rocket League outside of South Africa. But even they, they're getting 50 to 60 ping playing on South African servers, and they're competing at the highest level. For sure. Um, you've given us a lot to think about. If we want some more information on uh, esports in general or you guys specifically with Rocket League what are the best platforms to follow you on and get some more information probably I, I'm very tunnel visioned on Rocket League yeah. I know a little I know I could name other titles in esports oh, sure. but beyond that I don't know too much but I think the best place I I, I, I put up a one page website which is its entire job is to cultivate links to pe- your content creators nice. competitive players everything Rocket League related um, communities you know because mm-hmm. if you start to play Rocket League and you want to jam with other people who are who are as bad as you are um, <laughs> and always a problem you, know, you, want, you want to feel you want to be bad in a safe environment yes. there are communities that exist to do that to bring in new players and help them along and and and, and jam with mates um, so and that's so so my in-game name the, the online identity is Greybeard so so the website is greybeard.gg and that has everything greybeard.gg yeah I love it I love it <laughs> we got a message in from Kim uh, 10 years ago I told my son that he can't play video games Games as a living. He landed his dream job selling marketing and playing video games. I this mom it. had to eat her words. I love it. <laughs> and, and, and it's not a Good on you for, 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 <laughs> for you know, accepting defeat there. No, Kim. no, listen, it is. Do you know what? I So often, I mean, one of the best players in the country, I had a conversation with his mom, and, and it was, and, and, and she was, it was at the moment that she saw her son competing on, like, it was being broadcast on Twitch. Yeah. And there's her son competing, and she, and then she went, okay, this is a it's real, real thing. now. Yeah, this is a proper thing. And, but yeah, and, uh, absolutely. It's, uh, that's such a great story to hear. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it, man. Stay well. Absolutely. Thank you, Damien. The Midday Mix on Mix 93.8.